Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're continuing our series on navigation and we're looking at the A10A. So this is one of the Flaming Cliffs uh, planes, so it's one of the lower fidelity models. So you've got all these buttons and switches, but we don't actually use them, um, the, uh, or we don't interact with them. But all the gauges on the front of the dash work and it's everything is relevant. Anyway, um, so navigation. So we're interested in two types of navigation that the A10A can do. First of all, INS navigation, inertial navigation system. This is a system that is completely, um, it's essentially within the plane. There, there's an ILS, ILS box basically somewhere in the plane. Um, it doesn't uh, communicate with the outside stations or antennas or anything like that. And it allows us to, tra to traverse between waypoints. Um, these waypoints are set while the aircraft is on the ground uh, and that's simulated in DCS by uh, using the mission editor to place waypoints on the map. So that's the first type of navigation we're looking at. Second type is ILS. Uh, so let me just uh, show you the plan here. So here's our A10. We're going to traverse between waypoints 1, 2 and 3 using the INS system. Um, and then we're going to switch to the ILS system, the instrument landing system, which is going to allow us to move from waypoint 3 to actually land on the runway at Batumi. ILS is a system that allows you to basically stay on a predefined glide slope down to a runway in low visibility conditions. As you can see, it's complete whiteout, so we're not going to see anything uh, properly including the runway. Uh, it works, ILS works by communicating with a ground station. There will be a ground ILS station. Um, on this runway here, shining a beam, if you like, up a uh, ideal glide slope, and uh, we will receive that beam of radiation, and it will give us indicators to how to fly onto that beam, move left, move right, move up, move down. So we'll go through that shortly. Um, I believe the system only works if you choose an airport with ILS. So we're going to look at Batumi here. Click on it. Um, it's got runways three, one, and one, three, and one, three, which is this one that we're going to land on, going that way has got ILS uh, frequency 110.30 now because it's a low fidelity module we're not interested in the actual frequency we can't type that in anywhere but just the fact it's got ILS means that we can go and do the ILS landing okay so that's that we can get to work now let me leave that on there uh, so back to the INS the waypoint navigation there's two things that we care about one is getting to the waypoints that's why I want one two and three here they are two-dimensional waypoints they do not have an altitude they just have a latitude and a longitude as far as the A10 cares about uh, so we can go over them at any altitude um, but we also care about as well as hitting those waypoints we care about the course as you can see the dotted line shows the course between the waypoints so if we were here where my cursor is we could get he we could head towards waypoint one there but we would not be going along the course line there we want to go along the course line uh, so we've got instruments to tell us if we're deviating off the course line and we i'll show you that as well so let's have a look at the cockpit before we do in fact let's go and show the keys that we're going to need adjust controls going to need very simple the one key navigation modes going to swap between navigation modes uh, we've got previous waypoint there to shift between previous waypoints next waypoint there to shift between next waypoints okay left alt and c brings our cursor up there okay now the first thing i want to do is look at the instruments that we're going to be using one we've got the hud here and all of its relevant information that we'll go through shortly two the adi here the artificial horizon and it information that it gives and three, the HSI here, which gives us information about heading and course and range as well. Uh, now, these instruments overlap slightly in their function and design so that if you, for instance, lost one of them, if you lost the HSI, then we could carry on with just this and this. If we lost a HUD, then we can carry on with just this and this. Uh, so we're going to go through this tutorial using all three items. Well, before we go any further, we we'll notice that it's very hard to see this green writing um, on the HUD against this white fog. So we're going to change the color just to help this. Uh, right uh, control and H will do it. So let me get us going. Try and find a suitable color. Ah, that was quite good. That uh, orange, in fact, let me try or something else. Even better, yellow. Yellow shows up quite uh, well against the. Um, so imagine that we were in air to, gr uh, air to ground mode. The first thing we've got to do is go to um, navigation mode by pressing 1 and we're in um, INS navigation there um, you can things we're interested in are our speed there our barometric uh, sorry our radar altitude there uh, and we're just looking at stuff regarding navigation today uh, we've got our selected waypoint there number two and our distance from us to the waypoint there our predicted time to get to the waypoint there our current time there 
an indicator, a ribbon strip indicator here, here, sorry, a heading ribbon indicator here, which we'll uh, show using that. And um, this here, I don't know what it's called, but it's basically the marker showing in uh, in three dimensions, essentially, where that uh, waypoint is uh, and how we get to it. Okay, um, now let's go and have a look at the ADI. The ADI is here. It's essentially um, our official horizon. So you can see the artificial horizon there. You can see our, our plane painted on it in white here. There's the center of our plane. Here is uh, our azimuth indicator here. Um, now this will tell us essentially uh, where we want to head to get to the waypoint so it's currently left of us so we would turn left and the idea is we want to center that azimuth there um, and we've got the HSI uh, we've got the distance to the selected waypoint here we've got the uh, the compass magnetic compass here we've got now these needles are all um, in together at the moment so it's hard to differentiate them but I'm going to try and get them that number one needle there is the heading towards the currently selected waypoint this is the course indicator line here, which we'll go through in a bit, a uh, pointer here. And this line here is the course deviation line here, which we'll go through in a bit as well. Uh, next, what we're going to do is unpause and we're going to navigate to our first waypoint. Um, we're going to make it nice and easy. We're just going to use the HUD and um, we're going to try and stay on course on purpose. So let's unpause, navigate towards this box here. Uh, now one thing I noticed is that the, the box here which displays the waypoint is up in the air. Um, so I think uh, I said earlier that it does not consider the altitude of the waypoint. I think I may be wrong. I think it looks like it actually does consider the altitude of the waypoint because it's up in the air. Otherwise it would be on the ground. So we'll investigate that a little bit further. So we can see we're heading directly towards it just using the HUD. We're going to keep our path vector which is that icon there on uh, or as close to the waypoint as we can. You can see we're closing up 3.6. One thing to note with the A10 is that um, waypoint two, it says we've got waypoint 2 here what that means is this it's got the second waypoint selected so we went back to here it's actually got what we call waypoint 1 here selected the A10A calls the initial point the zero waypoint waypoint 1 so heading towards the second waypoint which is waypoint named number 1 so that's a little bit confusing but uh, that's just how it is right we've got 51 seconds to get there it says 3 miles to go punch the speed up Got our sync rate here, so it tells us whether we're going up or down, our vertical velocity. 1.9 miles. Whoops, one thing I forgot to say, along our heading strip here, um, so the triangle is where we're heading along the heading strip, and these two lines represent with the direction of the waypoint. So you can see the waypoint is ever so slightly off to the left. So that is an icon that we'll be using as well. It's hidden behind this little chap here, which can be a little bit annoying. And we've hit the waypoint. So um, it's moved to the third waypoint, which is known as waypoint two. It's 5.1 miles away. Um, and it's basically in that direction over there somewhere. And the box that highlights the waypoint has disappeared off the screen. It's been replaced by this little chap here. It's quite hard to see. But this marker here is telling, the, telling us that the waypoint marker is off the screen and basically chase it this way to get it back on the screen. If it was at the top right here, we'd have to chase it that way and so on. Right, so this next waypoint, we're going to, instead of using the HUD, we're going to use these chaps down here to navigate it to it and look at course deviation. So uh, we're at waypoint, uh, this, yeah, waypoint one here. And what I'm going to do is put on purposefully go off course. I'm going to send myself off in that direction here. So we purposefully get away from this uh, course line here. And then I'm going to show you how the instruments are going to try and get us back onto the course line to take us to waypoint two. Okay, so I'm going to turn right a bit. Oops, I'm going to turn right a bit, take us away from that course line. I'm going to turn our lights on with the L key. And you can see we're a good mile or so off course now. Um, right, so uh, the HUD is basically going to take us to the waypoint directly. It's not going to put us back on course. So if you followed the HUD, we would get to the waypoint, but not on course. Um, so we're going to rely on these instruments here. So we've got the ADI here. You can see it's uh, the... The azimuth line is to the left, so it's asking us to turn left. But more importantly, we've got this one here, the HSI. Uh, now, this is telling us that that's where we're heading at the moment. That's the 12 o'clock position. We're five miles away from the waypoint. Uh, the waypoint heading is that one there. And the waypoint course marker um, is this one here. You can see it's separated from the heading indicator, showing that we're off course. If this course indicator was aligned with the heading indicator here, then um, we would be on course 
and the name of the game is to get the course indicator here lined up with the heading indicator here both lined up with the 12 o'clock position so both those needles in exactly 12 o'clock if you can do that then you're heading towards the waypoint and you're on course and one more thing to point out here's a course deviation line here this line tells you how far you've deviated off the course and essentially helps you get back so we're going to use this HSI mainly to get back on the course we're going to have to do some stream movers because we've only got um, a couple of miles of, it was a bit silly of me to set the waypoint so close really but let's give it a go anyway so we're going to turn left sharp head towards that course deviation line on the HSI nice and aggressively and what we're going to do as we do that uh, is we're going to start to see that the course line and the waypoint heading um, pointer on the uh, HSI start to marry up so that and that are going to start to get closer to each other and this course uh, deviation lines are going to start to come towards the center as that starts to come towards the center we want to start, start turning right to get back on our heading to our waypoint with the idea um, of doing it so that we are back on heading just as this deviation line hits a uh, center point so let's just concentrate for a minute we're now only three miles away from the waypoint that line's coming in so we're going to turn sharply hunt for our waypoint heading and it's okay we've got ever so slightly off so we're going to now chase it right slightly and now I'll get back to the left so we're just looking at HSI nothing else at the moment and a tiny bit left and capel uh, so we've got everything lined up beautifully now we've got the course deviation lines in the center the course lines in the center the waypoint heading the number one is in the center and they're all orientated at the 12 o'clock position uh, so that has got us back on course as you can see we're back on course and heading towards waypoint two so that's pretty cool and we've got our ADIs agreeing that we're okay slightly to the right we need to go maybe um, and we're back here we've got our um, our uh, waypoint marker here so let's carry on now so we're just going to full blast our way to waypoint uh, the third waypoint as it says here so that's known as waypoint two one mile to go 0.1 miles and switch uh, now this time just to make it quick and simple we're just going to follow the HUD it's good practice to practice navigation with these steam gauges down here not always relying on the HUD because the HUD um, you can lose your HUD pretty easily now looking at the HSI we can see we're off course so we're going to deviate left slightly try and get back on course it happens when you overshoot sharp turns basically um, at waypoint changes still off course so we're going to chase it left a little more and turn right and bang on the money HSI everything's lined up everything's happy everything's good ever so slightly off course there we can chase that left right so let's look at our progress so we've traversed waypoint one two and three um, now we're getting close to switching to our ILS so what we'll do is we'll finish getting to waypoint three and then we're going to switch to ILS um, home into Batumi and use that for the landing so let's get that done one mile and we're done okay so what that's done is it's just put us back to our initial waypoint waypoint uh, what it calls the first waypoint 15 miles away and that takes us to the back of the trail we don't want to go there we want to go land so the next thing we're going to do is press one again and that's we're going to bring up our ILS so we're going to press one Let's have a quick look. We can tell we're in uh, ILS because we've got this uh, vertical um, uh, the vertical speed indicator here shown as a ladder gauge. Uh, as well as that, we've got some information here. Uh, what we can say is that it selected an airport that is 23 miles away. And that doesn't actually sound like our airport, so it may have chosen the wrong one for us. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't actually name the airport anywhere. It doesn't say Batumi or anything. Uh, if anyone knows where that's uh, shown then let me know but uh, as far as i know it's not there uh, so what i do i quickly nip in here and i'm going to put a measuring line out from here but it's not to me because to me is 14 miles away it's that one it's copy lady it's chosen the wrong one uh, and that happens um that's fine deal with it so what we're going to use is the next waypoint and previous waypoint keys to cycle through airports and one thing i forgot to say earlier on is when we were going through those waypoints earlier on those ins waypoints we could use the uh, previous waypoint and next waypoint keys to cycle through those waypoints so if we wanted to skip a couple just go straight to waypoint three or whatever we could have done that anyway let's use it to cycle through the airports and try and get the right one in time 
So we're looking at the distance here. That's how I'm going to gauge I've got the right one. Boom. That one there. Again, there's no other indication that it's Batumi, but I know it's 13 miles. It says there. And Batumi, we know, is 14 miles near enough. That's the right one, basically. Okay. Okay. So other than that, it's similar um, uh, icons as before. Similar information. We've got our heading ribbon here. It's, we've got to chase that. Uh, we've got our little chap, um, it's just off the screen at the moment, but you know the box that shows the waypoint and the chase marker will be there somewhere. Um, everything's the same. We've got our um, uh, azimuth indicator here. Now this is, uh, although it looks the same, this line is actually a little bit different now because it switched to the ILS system where it is communicating with the... Um, with the runway, this is known as the um, localizer line, and this is going to help us keep on course as well as heading. It's obviously, it's important that when we come into land, we're on the course for the landing as well as heading to the runway, because otherwise, if you weren't on course, you could come in essentially at a right angle to the runway or something. So uh, bear in mind that. The HSI is going to work just as before, and all of the items are going to work, including the course deviation line, I believe. The miles, it appears to have got wrong. That's interesting. It's reading 26 miles. I presume that's a bug. If anyone knows any different, let me know, but it looks like a bug. Um, other than that, uh, we're going to crack on. At um, a predefined distance, we're going to get an extra line on the ADI here. Now, I don't know the distance. It's usually four or five miles, maybe six miles. We'll get, as well as the localized line, a glide slope line, which is a, uh, which will be in the direction of the mouse cursor that I'm moving here. Um, and that is to keep us on the glide slope in vertical terms. And essentially, if it's above us up here, we want to essentially uh, um, um, head, up, head upwards or, or, or carry on straight, and it will eventually come down and meet us. And if it's below us, then we're above the glide slope, and we want to head down to meet it. And the idea is we're going to keep this line and the glide slope line, when it appears, centered on us there. Um, there is I can, there is a symbology on the HUD that will help us, but this is our primary thing for landing in these conditions. This is the one we want to believe, if you like, um, and the HSI is going to help as well. Anyway, uh, enough of me rattling on, let's go and get to it. So, I'm going to turn left a little, just going to use the HUD to get a rough idea of where the airbase is. We can see a, we can see a square there, and now I'm going to start using... Uh, we haven't got any information about height, where we want to be height-wise, so we're going to start using our brain just a little bit. You can see we're 12 miles out there. Um, we know that airbase is pretty much uh, at sea level, so it's pretty much a barometric zero. Um, you want to be at 300 feet altitude per every mile, so 300 times 12 is 3,600 I want to be. I'm currently at 5,000, so I'm way too high. Localizer here we're going to use for our left and right, uh, as, long with, as well as the HSI. The HSI is now working in terms of distance, so that was just a little bit of a bug earlier on. So let's get going. So really concentrating on this localizer now, not really interested in what's outside the window. We've also got the altitude here in steam gauge and our speed here. Uh, so we've got everything we want down there. We're not really interested in what's going outside the window. So let's get our speed down, uh, sorry, our altitude down to 3,600 or just below. We can see our distance now is 10 miles. We want to be at 3,000. Left a little bit to get on back on that localizer. Speed's way too high, so we're going to stop air braking now. Okay, we're sinking a bit fast now. We're going to rest our sink rate. We are now nine miles and we're a little bit under the glide slope now so we're going to start leveling out now we we'll start to trim the plane up speed is okay so i'm going to pop those air brakes back in for now altitude is still sinking a bit low so we're going to go we're going to rise ever so slightly Distance is now seven miles. Uh, altitude looks pretty good, actually, one and a half thousand feet. That's uh, just about right. Uh, in fact, no, we're slightly low still. So we're going to pinch up just a little bit. We're not going to come in too low. Speed 180 or thereabouts. Distance six miles. Still a little bit low. Haven't received the glide slope information yet. I'm going to hold altitude there. Generally speaking, in LS, you'd never go upwards. Um, if you're too low, you just keep going level, and that glide slope will essentially chase you down as you get closer. Okay, we're down to speed is 170. I'm going to go right ever so slightly, chase that 
little bit more altitude. We are sinking because we're going slower and the trim's a bit wrong. Leveling out there. Four miles now. Altitude's pretty good. And there's our glide slope and pause. So we've got within the distance of, of the glide slope works um, with the ILS station, which is, what, four miles? Yeah, about what we said. And we've got this line here. And you can see that we're well below the glide slope at the moment. So rather than pulling up, I'm just going to carry on flying and let that glide slope come down and meet me. And when it meets me, then I'm going to follow it down, essentially. So... Okay, it's met me now, and I've got it centered on my aircraft, so everything now is going on there, there, and there. Whoops, wasn't concentrating, and I've lost the glide slope. Okay, I need to start actually thinking about the landing, uh, so I'm going to put my gear out. I'm going to put my flaps down. Whoops, and we've shot above the glide slope because as soon as we put our flaps down, it made us shoot up essentially. Distance is two miles. At some point, we're going to have to start looking out the window trying to find this bloody base. Speed is 150, everything's good. We've slipped below the glide slope. Let's just arrest that ever so slightly. Just can't see out anything out the window. It's complete wiped out. Oh my god, that's the radar altimeter going off. We're about to crash. Trust the instruments, always trust the instruments. Glance up. Is that a runway? That might be the runway, I'm not sure. One mile away. Speed 140. ADO is still good. Bang, center. I think that is the runway, you know. The ILS is taking off slightly to the right now, and that's probably because the ILS station. Oh no, there's the runway. It was taking us in the right place. Uh, did I put my gear out? I think so. Did I put my flaps out, air brakes out. Hey, that's not bad, bearing in mind that's my first try, and I don't fly this frame very often, so that's okay. Whoops, bit of a bounce. Thump. Pretty happy about that. So that is using instruments, how to use it with an INS uh, modulating between, navigating between waypoints, and then coming into a landing when you've got zip zero visibility, basically. Um, can't think of anything else to say apart from that. I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.